How's it going guys, Justin here. Uh, today we're gonna talk about applying, uh, effectively applying a splint on our casualty um, during maybe a secondary assessment in our tactical field care setting, right? And we notice an open fracture uh, on the patient's forearm here, right? Uh, so the first thing I would be doing at this point is I would be manipulating his wrist uh, ever so slightly here and checking for a radial pulse. And on this patient, I do feel a radial pulse. And so I would kind of have him, if he's conscious, I would kind of have him hold his wrist here and just kind of support it. The equipment that you'll need to perform this procedure on this casualty, uh, the vast majority of it is going to be in the casualty's IFAC, right? So initially, uh, we're going to open up the casualty's IFAC here, and I'm going to get out a few supplies. I'm going to get out my roll of tape. Uh, I'm going to get out our uh, combat pill pack. I am going to get out our DD-1380. We'll need that. I'm going to get out this elastic bandage as well. As our triangular bandages. Uh, we're gonna need some additional supplies, right? And those can be found in our Combat Lifesaver uh, squad issue bag. Uh, so we have some padded splints, uh, we got some uh, extra elastic bandages, and maybe a set of shears. Uh, so this is my buddy Jack. He is going to help us uh, mold this padded splint, and we're gonna use the casualties unaffected uh, limb to mold this splint. And while he's doing that, um, we still have this open wound on our casualty here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, very lightly um, put some bulky uh, rolled gauze around this just to try and help us with some sterility and some infection precautions, right? So I don't want to cause any more harm or pain to our casualty, so I'm just going to do this really loose. And we want to get this on before we get the splint on so we're not doing it over the splint. And then when they go ahead and cut this off uh, at the next echelon of care, uh, then it causes further harm to our casualty. Take a little bit of tape for good measure. Put tape on our tail here. Okay, so Jack has got our splint pre-measured on the unaffected side here. Uh, you'll notice that he's got a roll on the end to keep the casualty's hand in a neutral position, as well as he kind of left a little bit of a spot here where I can reach in and check the patient's pulse. Uh, so that's one thing, you know, before we splint him and then again after we splint him, we want to make sure that he still is maintaining that pulse and that we didn't cause uh, any type of constricting effects that made him lose that pulse. All right, so if you will, Go ahead and hold that to the best of your ability. Use our elastic bandage here. And we want to immobilize the joint below as well as the joint above uh, the affected area. And the reason for that is uh, when he twists his wrist or moves his elbow, those two bones in this forearm are going to move as well and it's going to further uh, cause pain to our casualty and uh, potentially do more harm. Our nice little Velcro ends here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then after I'm done, a little bit of tape. Tape. And then our second elastic bandage. We'll start here. So we immobilize the wrist initially. Now Go around, kind of mobilize the elbow here. Didn't end up on the right side, so we'll flip it. Use that Velcro. And then again, with our tape, for an extra level of security here. So at this point, uh, we got them all splinted up. We want to go ahead, like I said previously, and recheck the casualty's pulse. He had a pulse prior to and then again after our splinting. And so now we're going to put him in somewhat of a position of comfort to the best of our ability. And uh, if he's conscious, we can have him go ahead and help support his own arm. And so we have uh, some triangular bandages here. We're going to use like a swath technique here. We've tied two of these together. These can be found in your combat lifesaver bag, um, as well as uh, there's usually one in the individual first aid kit. All right, so we have it where this is kind of pinning this upper bone up against his chest. And then the third one that we would use here, I wouldn't put this in a normal sling, how you would see a, a medic do or the hospital do. I would just kind of improvise here. And so we don't want to have him hold this. Um, so we're going to take this triangular bandage. We're going to go around the back of the neck here, just so it kind of holds it in this position and he still has his free hand here. Uh, we just don't want this so tight that it cuts off any circulation anywhere else, right? And we're going to be going back to the casualty's individual first aid kit. We're going to pull out their combat pill pack. We're gonna verify that our casualty does not have any allergies that uh, you know, prohibit him from taking this uh, combat pill pack. And so if he is conscious, 
uh, and he can swallow uh, on his own. Uh, we'll go ahead and administer the two pain medications and the one antibiotic that's in here. Uh, the antibiotic really because this was an open fracture, and then we would document all of our treatment to include the combat pill pack on our DD Form 1580.